Hi there, it's me, Michael, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So you're going to ask, what's with the haircut? Well, I have alopecia. There's spots of hair missing. Um, so as not to look like someone who's missing their hair in random places, it's just easier to shave. Um, it's not anything formal. I just figured to put in a shirt for this one. So, um, I've noticed people have been leaving comments lately. I'm, I'm getting around to things. So let's have a little add-on for my last video. The last video was my suicide story and after my stroke. And seeing a lot of upticks lately, part of that might be the time of year um, because of this Christmas, um, um, Yom Kippur, or no, not Yom Kippur, um, Hanukkah, um, New Year's, that whole mandatory festival holiday period of family-enforced guilt. People are talking about I should have died. That's the subject of this video. I should have died, right? Should have, should have, whatever. <clears throat> to quote the movie, movie Beautiful Mind, I was scared. I was terrified. I was mortified. I was petrified. And I was stupefied when I had my stroke. It's, it's probably the scariest thing that's ever going to happen to you. It is probably the most terrifying thing that's ever going to happen to you. I was mortified. I had my stroke in front of 140, 170 people at work. They watched me go down. People in my workplace watched me actually almost die. Not like, I lost my purse, I almost died. No, like actually almost died. Um, I'm just lucky I didn't shit and piss myself. They got to see me when my body and my mind couldn't control each other. Like I had, you know couldn't stand, couldn't talk properly. Um, yeah. Petrified because there's nothing better than sitting in the back of an ambulance doing roughly 90 miles an hour, 120-ish kilometers an hour down the highway, which turned a, you know, 32 kilometer trip into something in the kin of like 10 minutes. Uh, yeah. And then you get into the hospital and the first doctor you see happens to be a neurologist, and you get the knife hand, you're having a stroke, right? Yeah. Stupefied. It's difficult to take inventory of what you have when you don't know what it is like to lose it. And then it's even more difficult to take inventory to what you have versus what you had when you do lose it. So... It's kind of normal to say I should have died, in a way. Um, I, I'll be honest, I lived in the I should have died for six to nine months. I was... I've told my psychiatrist to his face, while being admitted to a psychiatric facility, I should have died. And he said, well, if you should have died, the doctors would have let you die. Because if anyone was going to say you should have died, it would have been a doctor. And unless you've recently gone to medical school, you're not a doctor. However, I have played one on TV, but for some strange reason, that doesn't count. Facts. Reasons. Oh well. So, people are going to say I should have died, and sometimes they're going to mean it. And it's it's not a suicidal thing. It's a, uh, I'm tired, I'm frustrated, I'm done with this. Uh, in some cases, it is just French frustration. They're like, I should have died. You know, they're like, you know what, this sucks, I've had enough. However, that doesn't mean that you should be flippant about it and not take stock of that statement. If a stroke survivor happens to say, I should have died that day, is it something that they're just trying to intimate in, in conversation? Like, hey, that day I should have died. Like, that was a pretty scary day. Or is it, you know what? I just should have died that day. Fuck this. I should have died. Right? That might require a little bit more conversation. Or is it more like, you know what? I'm just kind of sick of this. You know, I think I really should have died that day. And then you get the ultimate statement, which does require an investigation. Fuck this shit. I'm done with this. I would have been better if I just died. Right? There, there's, there's a difference there. We've removed the shoulda. Right? There's no longer a should there. It's like, I, I would have been better off dying. I've said that statement too. You know? Um, in some nations... Uh, medically assisted death is an option and if that is an option you choose to pursue well that's between you and your clinical team um, I will say I've actually had that conversation with my general practitioner and my psychiatrist 
And for those of you that say, in Canada, if you just ask for it and they do it, I'm going to tell you you're wrong. There's a process. There's like six steps to that process. I didn't make it to step six because that's where they, they take you out. You know, like it's done. Um, you've got to jump through a lot of hoops. It's just not easy. Like they're going to kill you up there in Canada. You just got to say, kill me. No, it doesn't work that way. It totally doesn't work that way. So why is a stroke survivor saying I should have died? It's frustration. It's desperation. It's, it's a realization that things are irrevocably different. I'm not, I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm saying it's a thing. Right. Now, I've said it, friends of mine have said it, friends of mine that are stroke survivors have said it, uh, friends of mine that are stroke survivors on two different continents have said it, so it's not just a Canadian thing or an American thing or a whatever thing, it's, it's a common, common, common thing, because, and I'm going to say something that you normies, meaning you non-brain injured people just aren't going to understand, you don't fucking get it, you don't, um, yeah, if I had died that day, I would not have experienced the same difficulties, hardships, and, and obstacles when I returned back to work. I have a reasonable, probable, and genuine belief that I was discriminated in the workplace due to my disabilities uh, because I was a different person. I wasn't the same. Uh, if I had, had died... Things would be different in my life that didn't need to change. But they did change because of the stroke and, and some of its outcomes. So the whole I should have died thing in some cases is a realization that I'm not I'm not comfortable with these changes. I'm not happy with these changes. I didn't want this to happen. I didn't want all these changes to happen, right? It could be it could be anything from you know, you're doing your three to six months off work and you're just getting used to your new world. It could be you're in a hospital waiting for another procedure to be done. It could be you're me and you're like 36 months out as of yesterday. You know, I'm 36 months after a stroke yesterday. And in those 36 months, I have essentially lost my job. Um, that's another story. I can't say more than that. Um... I've lost a relationship with someone that I was intimate with and, and I loved very much. Um, I've lost some friends over it. I have lost my hair because of it. I'm on five psychiatrically based medications. If I get the sixth medication, I get a free toaster. You know, so I take one d drug in the morning. I take another drug in the afternoon. I take another drug in the evening. I take a drug to sleep. And then I have another drug for when I have really fucking shitty days and I need Ativan. So I'm on this many medications just from one doctor, and that's my psychiatrist. Like, if I died, that wouldn't be the case. Um, I'm on a, a cholesterol medication for the rest of my life, whether I need it or not. I'm on low-dose aspirin every day for the rest of my life, whether I need it or not. There are so many things that would be different if I died that day. But the flip side to that... And I still have trouble with this, so I'm not going to say I'm perfect in any way. The flip side to that is there's things you got to see differently because of that stroke. Um, my bullshit meter is now like a zero. Like I have zero tolerance for bullshit. Um, and I'm more than happy to call bullshit when it's bullshit. Now, that took some time to become that assertive and stand up for myself. But I now have no problem telling people that, no, you're a fucking idiot and I'm learning to be doing diplomatic, but you know, you know what I mean. So, is it a troubling thing when the stroke survivor says, I should have died? Yeah, it is. Should it be overlooked? No, it shouldn't. Right? This is where you're going to have to use those conversational skills and engage them in a conversation. That's realistic, that's an honest, that has no agenda, Right? Because for me to say I should have died, that's a feeling. That's an emotion. You can't argue an emotion, right? So you're hungry. Try being unhungry. Think about that. So you become hungry for whatever reason. Are you Snickers bars hungry? Or are you like three-course meal hungry? 
It's irrelevant. You're hungry. Until you do something to satiate that feeling of hunger, you're still hungry. So for me to say I, I should have died, that's a feeling. That's an observation. That's my perceptions. That's based on many factors. It's neither right. It's neither wrong. It's simply there. And for someone to start their conversation with, you should not feel that way. How the fuck should I feel? How the fuck should I feel? Right? So as soon as you start a conversation, hey, you're wrong. Emotions aren't wrong. If emotions are wrong, love is wrong. Hmm? Yeah, exactly. Profound, I know. Um, so someone's going to say I should have died and... You cannot start that conversation out with, you're wrong, you shouldn't feel that way, you know. It, it is what it is. You can't change that feeling. Only time can. Possibly medication can. Possibly counseling can. Possibly whatever can. Now, if you are still feeling the I should have died after a year, you need help. Or if you're the supporter of that person, you need to get them to help. So, it's difficult to deal with someone when they say, I should have died, right? A victim of a traumatic event, like a car accident, um, an, an event of interpersonal violence, a train accident, what have you, they might say the same thing, I should have died. Part of that's based on trauma. Part of that is trauma-based. Part of it is because her life is irrevocably different. However, the stroke survivor has that extra added benefit of their body and their brain no longer get along effectively. They still have difficulties. They still have troubles. Um, someone recently told me, hey, you don't look like you've had a stroke. I've learned to bite my tongue to the point of almost amputation. I know they mean well. How should I look? What are you expecting? I have many friends that have had strokes that are all over the world that look pretty much like I do. Well, I'm a little bit more ugly than the average bear, but that's another story. Um, I have a friend in Arizona. I have a friend in Texas. I have a friend in the UK. I have, you know, um, various friends in other places in the States. And by far and large, we don't look like we've had strokes, right? By far and large, our lives have all been impacted in some regard by far and large, we each have relatively the same symptoms in some cases, but each have our own different, unique symptoms. All, at least five people that I know, we've all had different strokes. You know, we've all had different types of strokes uh, for different reasons. And we all kind of feel the same way in some reasons, in some ways. So when the stroke survivor says, I should have died, that's just a conversation starter. I'll be quite honest. It's a conversation starter. Don't panic. Don't get in a flap. No need for dramas or hurries. Right? It's just a conversation starter. Um, I'm going to do a uh, part two to the word should and how it's a disgusting little word. Uh, I'll do that in the next couple of days. And I'll try to do... Uh, uh, like a yearly update video by the end of this end of the year. I'm gonna say December 30th. I'll do it. So, on that note, just consider when someone says, "I should have died," right? If you should have died, the doctors would let it happen. If you were unsavable at the point of triage, at, at, uh, when you were admitted to the emergency room or critical care unit or whatever it was, if you should have died, the doctors would have let it because there's nothing they could have done to save you. So if you're going to try to tell me you should have died, I'm going to ask you, then why did the doctor save you? Right? For those around that have been hearing their loved one say, I should have died, just talk to them. Figure out what's going on. Is it frustration? Is it anger? Is it desperation? Is it just them having an off day? Or are they truly thinking of taking themselves out? In which case, you can go back to the last video I did. That'll inform you better. However, on that note, I'm going to check out for the night. Uh, if I don't 
talk to you people between now and Christmas Day. Have a happy, safe Christmas. Uh, good uh, Hanukkah, Festivus, Kwanzaa, Eid, whatever you happen to celebrate. Please be safe. Enjoy the time with your family. Right? And uh, just be good to each other. If you happen to like what you've been watching, please like, share, subscribe. And if you know a stroke survivor that's struggling, please point this video out to them. If you have if you have friends and family that are struggling with you having the stroke and you've been saying things like, I should have died, show them this video. Like, go down and hit the share thing and send it to them. Like, just do that now. And if you happen to see someone around you or yourself all of a sudden lose your sense of balance, right, or become befuddled, uh, if you happen to uh, have difficulty with your eyes, you can't see it in one eye, you only see in grayscale, you see a little dot in the world, if you haven't have facial droop, you can't move your arms equally effectively or at all, right? So you can't, like, raise both arms. Um, see. If you have communication difficulties, right? So you're, uh, you, uh, you have difficulty with speech. You have difficulty understanding speech. You have difficulty saying words. You're having, um, ineffective sentences or you hear like the teacher from peanuts wah, 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 right um, if you have difficulty standing unaided you know you can't stand on your own at that moment immediately call 911 get the help you need what you do might save a life including your own have a good day